So I swore to Maggie that I would not make this pitchy. Uh, but when you're asked to speak at a conference because you have a cute baby and you're not allowed to speak about the cute baby, that's a challenge. So I'm going to do my very best and just give me the dirty look if it starts to be pitchy and I will sway away from talking about Cloud DX. Um, so, a uh, brief introduction. Uh, I'll spend a minute talking about myself, a minute about the company, and then really get into the meat of the talk. Um, let's see. So, what I want to talk about today, and my slide just messed up. <laughs> so there's supposed to be another picture there. Um, so, my purpose of my talk is talking about being a, a, a person with a full time job and, and going on a journey of starting a, a, a company, being a startup entrepreneur. How many of you have a full time job? and are on that journey. You decided to take on the task. Something resonated with you. There's actually quite a few hands in the room. So you're like me. So the real question is, how do you balance that? Or are you start raving mad for founding a digital health startup with a full-time job? Because it's definitely a challenge, and there's pearls, and there's pitfalls there that I've learned through the School of Hard Knocks. So I hope to share those with you today. So my journey started briefly in Haiti. It's 2010, so going seven years ago, volunteering in a, in a volunteer hospital. I came across a patient that needed an ECG, life or death situation. This hospital, which was the most modern at the time, given the devastation there, didn't have this device. So I go back to my garage. I'm a doctor. I'm not an IT person. I'm not an engineer. Doctors are the least sophisticated investors you'll ever meet. So I have no credibility as an entrepreneur. But I started this journey, blew a lot of cash really ostracized myself from my life and my family from a, from a time and investment perspective. But lo and behold, I uh, um, you know saved a patient along the way and realized that the world needed a tricorder, and not just in Haiti, but even in Canada. So a device that you could use at home, it's connected, it's based in artificial intelligence, it has dummy commodity sensors that help derive signals from your body with your inputs and gives you valuable insight into your health. Saves you a walk-in clinic visit, improves your outcomes, all that sort of jazz. I'm not going to get into that. This is not pitchy. Uh, but lo and behold, I met Robert Call, my co-founder and a serial entrepreneur. He's based in New York City, and we founded CloudDX. And along the way, we've been very lucky as a Canadian healthcare startup. Um, we have a product on the market now. It's a connected health kit. It's partnered with another intriguing startup in Toronto called Akira, where you can instantly connect with a doctor on your app. And They'll download your metrics and make decisions for you. Um, and then, so we're here, we already have a product. And we're really quite famous or infamous for a tricorder we've developed for the XPRIZE competition, which is a nonprofit based in, in California that incentivizes people around the world to you know, solve Canada, you know, mankind's greatest challenges, cleaning the oceans, cleaning the air, creating a tricorder for home health. And our home health tricorder is now one of the top 10 finalists in the world. So. We have the infamy of being the only Canadian company to be a finalist in the next price competition, which uh, you know has been really something that we've leveraged from a marketing perspective. So there's an example of our, of our tricorder, the, the app, all your vital signs, like a mini ICU, on your phone, going to the cloud, and we can use all sorts of metrics and machine learning and, and derive insights on your health. That's all I'm going to talk about CloudDX. <laughs> And now we're going to get into the meat of the talk. So along the way, you know, as I've mentioned, we got an award being Startup Canada's Innovative Company of the Year Award. We won this award at Interface Health. We're a finalist in the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize. So we have all these accolades. And we were even at TEDx recently. Rob and I spoke at TEDx Toronto, which is kind of exciting. And that's exciting for the digital health startups here that are aspiring to hit similar milestones and targets and have a trajectory like we have. We've grown from being three guys with no cash no office in a dream to a company with 20 staff and Waterloo in New York City. And uh, you know, we're really growing. It's been really exciting. We're still cash strapped. We're not break even yet, but it's been exciting for us. What does that mean to me on the inside? That took a whole lot of time, a whole lot of money, a whole lot of effort. I'm a full time physician. Something's got to give. I'm sucking in my gut right now because I don't work out anymore. <laughs> it's been years since I've seen a gym. My family, I treasure my time with my family. Something's got to get. I don't watch TV. I don't read books. I don't play sports. Those are things I loved to do prior to 2010. Things that defined me. I don't do them anymore. So something's got to give. So when you start this journey, take a real hard look in the mirror. Ask yourself and break it down by the day. How many hours can I spend on my startup 
because this is probably going to resonate with a lot of you in this room. How many of you are digital health startup entrepreneurs? I gotta see more hands tonight, because I know I've talked to half of you. Raymond's hand better be up. There's a whole bunch of your hands gotta be up here. Um, this will resonate with you. I don't even call it failure, I call it feedback. Zach's experience in the emergency room, handing out cards for Dash MD. It's feedback. This resonates with most of, uh, most of us as entrepreneurs. What does that really mean? So to me as a doctor, it's a symptom. It's a symptom that you have a problem. <laughs> and your problem is you will work till the ends of the earth. You will spare no effort. You will not sleep. You will not eat. You will survive on mac and cheese to solve your problem. And what does that mean for the rest of your life? It takes a hit. So that's something you have to be very cognizant of as a startup entrepreneur. Are you ready for this journey? Because it's not just about being opt opt and optimistic, being a reasonable speaker, being inspiring, you know, resonating with the, you know, the upside uh, company's vision of helping the world. That's why we're all here in this room today. That's why we're all here. But it's, the reality is you need some, some hardcore pessimism and they're gonna bring you down a notch and help you realize what the practical aspects of those decisions are. So we're our own biological hazards. And so if you're in a room full of people talking like this, run for the freaking hills. <laughs> Some people dumbing it down for you and making it practical. You know, when I started my journey, I thought that's what the journey's going to be. You've all seen variations and permutations of this slide. I think I ripped off something similar from Maggie Bergeron, and that's the reality. And so for us in the room who think failure is not an option and failure is just feedback, exciting, optimistic, resonates with you, the reality is we're we're swimming and we're drowning and we'll do anything at all costs to pull ourselves out to get there. So that means I don't put my kid to sleep at night tonight, you know, like I, I'm taking a hit personally. So where do I find inspiration then? So the inspiration shouldn't be in those macro milestones, being the next Zuckerberg, getting series A financing for millions, saving millions of lives. The only way you'll be sustainable on this journey is if you focus on the little, very, very little, milestones, the ones that fly under the radar that you almost don't even realize happened when you hang up the phone and you're like, oh shit, that was an exciting moment for our company. We just had our first sale. Not that, oh, we didn't hit our metric of 100 sales in the first week. We just had our first sale. Maybe we should celebrate that moment because if you don't, you get bogged down in a hurry. So I really encourage you as aspiring digital health entrepreneurs to enjoy the journey, to really focus on those micro milestones that may fall under the radar. And again, if there's anything I could learn in retrospect, it's spend more time maintaining your, your balance. So this is a slide I ripped off from the internet. I don't even know who this guy is. <laughs> but I gotta give him some credit. <laughs> He's speaking some truth. Um, the Samurai Warriors apparently do are infamous for all sorts of diverse tasks and things that they did. Renaissance, they're the masters of the arts. Um, the modern day warrior class, the entrepreneur, we've lost that balance. Like, I can tell you when I look at Zach and Corey in the eyes, those guys are not sleeping when, when they're toiling away doing the dash and vaping. I can guarantee Zach's no longer on Tinder. He probably doesn't even have a profile. Um, Cloud DX, any questions? guy and I was like I'm gonna wear the medical hat I'm gonna take 10% of the company that's my ask that was a medical thing and when you realize you're I realize in retrospect as a co-founder you're always raising capital it doesn't matter what your hat is so it ends up being a lot of your time you spend a lot of your time trying to raise capital and that's more time I wasn't factoring into the equation I didn't know I was gonna have two dinners a week with people that I had to schmooze with and no pun intended, I was born with a brown nose, but I have a brown nose to get capital so I can pay my engineers. That sucks. And it really sucks because it happens on my hockey night, my basketball night, so I haven't been to those events in years. 
Um, so the reality is, again, something you have to back into. No matter how much you do it yourself into thinking you will not be raising capital, you'll be freaking raising capital. And you better spend some time doing it. Fantastic talk. Thank you. Uh, amazing news about Akira. Do you see this translating to other providers other than digital health uh, providers? Great question. Oh my God, Maggie, it's his fault, not mine. <laughs> He's asking about the Cloud DX marketing strategy. Um, yes, <laughs> Rob will answer that question offline, Maggie, but the truth is yes, we see ourselves partnering with all sorts of providers. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how much capital have you raised so far, and how have you gone about finding people to uh, pitch? Great question. Um, Give you a 30 second answer. Uh, the truth is we've been relatively unique. We've had a lot of notoriety and free fame and marketing through the media. And exposure to Cloud DX is being for being an XY panelist, we've been on Quirks and Quirks. So we've had a lot of sort of cold calls. No, almost none of those cold calls actually translate to investors. Most of our investors network are people that we know. We have one big super angel who came to us through one of my co-founders who's not a doctor. The rest of them mostly are doctors. And it happened to people I know. And so there's pearls and there's pitfalls in that, in that arrangement. One is they trust you, they rely on you, they rely on your reputation. It's a lot, it's a vote of faith for me, and it really is, resonates with me. On the other hand, when I lose hundred thousand dollars of the young gastroenterologist money at Oakville Hospital, it's gonna be hard for me to look at him in the face when we're having interactions about patients. So I'm nervous. I really am. Take one more. One more question. Okay, this is kind of a two-parter. So first, is this your full-time job now? Great question. No. No, it's still <laughs> the side thing. Oh, geez. In the morning, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go home and sleep. Just wake up and do Maggie's talk because I haven't prepared it, of course, because I'm a doctor <laughs> and I don't do things in the last minute. And uh, my wife developed an infection after her surgery. Her surgeon happens to be here, Dr. Jazz Jahal. <laughs> so weird. And so, anyway, so then I couldn't prepare my talk, so I slept for two and a half hours after being up for 29, and spent 10 minutes on this talk, and then drove my ass here in the traffic from Oakville. So the truth is, it's really hard to be a startup entrepreneur. I can't emphasize this enough. That's why when I see Corey and Zach in their 20s, single, no independence, they can live in a condo and on the mac and cheese and be okay. Do it. When you're 44, think twice. Really think twice. I'm still enjoying the micro milestones I talk about, but it's damn hard. Okay, so do you always see this as a side thing, or do you want to make this full time? Do you see yourself walking away yeah, in a little while? The dream is I see myself, I've enjoyed being a doctor and Losing people at a micro level, those interactions in the room, changing lives, helping families overcome death. I'm an ICU doctor, I'm an internist, I'm like a cheap man's doctor house. Um, so that's what I do for a living. But then I realized if I could do this at a population level and really influence health and make some money on the side, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not sure, that, inter that interests me. Uh, because I'm a Canadian-based healthcare physician, so I drive a Nissan Murano, I struggle, I don't work, if I don't work for a month, we're homeless, you know what I mean? Like, so the bottom line is, yeah, that, that interests me as well. Um, and so the, the, the vision for me is if I could still work as an internal medicine specialist because I have patients I care for, I enjoy that work, but do it much less frequently and do this full time, that's the dream one day. I don't even want to make a billion dollars. I just want to be able to make ends meet at home, but spend more of my time doing what I really love. So that's the, that's the end game for me. Amazing, thank you so much. Thank you.